In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, on God, Amen. Today, we'll speak about uh, transgenderism. And I will not speak about the biblical perspective on transgender identity, because I'm sure all of you know it is wrong, it's not the will of God, and many verses actually are against transgenderism. That's why I will skip this part. But my talk uh, mainly will be about in parenting how actually to raise our children in a way to protect them from the transgender mind. And also as a Sunday school servant, if somebody comes to you uh, and tells you my son or my daughter, or maybe your student in Sunday school uh, tells you that he is attacked by some transgender thoughts, how to deal with it. And also I will address uh, another point like in work, if there is a transgender colleague working with me and wants me to call him she or call her he, how to deal this with this from Christian uh, perspective. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in our society now, they are justifying what is wrong and what is evil and they defending it. And they try to separate between gender and sex. And they say that we are born with biological sex, either male or female, but this is not necessarily our gender. And actually, uh, unfortunately, in New York Times, uh, they said, biologically speaking, there are many gradation running from, fail, for, from female to male. Along that spectrum lie at least five, six, perhaps even more. So they are saying people are not male and female, it's a spectrum. And between male and female, we can have five, uh, six, or more. Uh, definitely, this principle is not a scientific principle at all. Uh, and in Genesis, it's very clear God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created him. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So the biblical view on gender and sex takes into account not only the creation of a biological male and a biological female, but also marriage, reproduction, and procreation. When God mentioned in, the, in Genesis, he created them male and female, immediately after this, he said, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So in the economy of God, God created male and female so that they may procreate. But with transgenderism, uh, how this will happen? And now they use in, in psychology and psychotherapy a term dysphoria. Dysphoria means unease or dissatisfaction. So when they say gender dysphoria means the feeling that I am not satisfied 
by my gender. I am not satisfied with the biological sex I am born with. And they classify them into two types of gender dysphoria. First one, they call it early onset, onset, sorry, early onset gender dysphoria, which means the children feel that he is a female or she is a male at age of two or four years old. But according to psychology today, they say very, very, very a small number of children, they suffer from this, and mainly because of parenting, not because they are born with this. And I will explain some of the problems in wrong parenting. But the most common, that more than 99%, it's called rapid onset gender dysphoria, uh, which affect teens and adults, who actually identified with their biological sex for a long time, but like in adolescence or in adulthood, they decide that they want to change their gender. And sometimes they change their bodies, meaning hormones and surgical intervention. Uh, and there are many reasons behind this. One of the major reasons behind this is social media. Because social media celebrating the idea of transgenderism. So it became like a fashion and some youth like just to try it. Uh, so some youth embraced tender, a transgender behavior because it became popular. Uh, there is social celebration for those who uh, trans uh, change their gender and there is unique recognition for them. So they are looking for attention, they are looking for uh, popularity. Uh, but also there are some factors. And they found people who tend to change their gender most of them suffer from one of the following list. Either low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, lack of identity, eating disorder, personality disorder, self-injury, autism spectrum disorder, sexual trauma, or gender trauma. And the research did not answer this question. Whether this list is the reason behind transgender activity or because they decided to do transgender activity, they are suffering from this. So we don't know whether this list is the cause or the result. So, how parents and we as Sunday school servant can help to establish a secure and a stable sense of sexual identity as God designed. Many times parents, uh, they don't raise the children and according to their gender, according to their sex. For example, if a mother wants to have uh, a girl and she doesn't have a girl, and she has, for example, three boys, so maybe the third boy, she will treat him as a girl. 
يعني مثلا ايه لو شعره ناعم كده تطوله له تبقى فرحانه بيه ما هي ما عندهاش بنت يعني انا الحقيقه لما بشوف طفل صغير شعره طويل ببقى قلقان جدا جدا يعني يمكن من 10 15 سنه اهل واحد كان بيعديها بس not in this time you need to raise the boy as a boy and the girl as a girl and مثلا if a girl has two or three boys فاحيانا بيسيبوها to absorb from her brothers or the masculinity طبعا ده غلط parents should pay attention to the girl to raise her as a girl and the boy to raise him as a boy from their childhood the way they dress them the toys that they play with الحاجات دي مهمة on how they address them also initiate early consistent age appropriate sex education at home you will be surprised ولاد في سن خمس ست سنين they know about transgenderism they know about homosexuality so don't wait until they are exposed to this وبعدين انت to start بقى to intervene uh, you need to be proactive before your children go and be exposed So this world of sexual immorality, you need to teach them about sexuality according what's appropriate to their age. What's appropriate to their age? Melissa, one mother last week, it came to me, Bintah, Melissa, داخلة المدرسة كندر جاردن. وبعدين شافت ولد بيبوس بنت في المدرسة هما كندر جاردن فراحت تسأل مامتها على ذيس بيهيفير ف يعني الولاد الصغيرين خالص بيشوفوا حاجات دلوقتي تريجر كويشن ان ذير مايند عشان كده البيرنتس وان ساند سكول We need actually to teach our children early enough. And also as parents, we need to educate ourselves about healthy childhood sexual development. So I can be proactive and teach my uh, child, my son or my daughter about sexuality from the right perspective. And مثلا وانتوا بتشرحوا قصه ادم او وحواء محتاجين ان انتوا تنفاسايز ان ربنا created تو جندرز ميل اند فيميل ان ايتش وان شود بي براود اوف هيز جندر اف اي ام كرييتد ميل اي بي براود اند اف اي ام فيميل اي بي براود وممكن وانتوا بتصلوا مع الاطفال الصغيرين يعلم يشكر ربنا ان هو مثلا هي created him in this gender so make him accept himself or accept herself and pray وممكن تشرح له تقول له وربنا خلقهم ذكر وانثى ميل اند فيميل so that they can get married and have children like بابا وماما في البيت بالطريقه دي انت just you plant principle in his mind about in whom there are only two genders nothing more but also be aware of any patterns uh, creating problem at home لو ابتدى ابنك او بنتك يبتدوا يعملوا تصرفات يعني غريبه Be patient and start to ask a question. Let them open up to you and listen to them what they are going to tell you. 
دونت رياكت مثلا لو جالك ابنك تين ايجر ولا ولا ايفن اصغر من كده قال لك انا عايز ابقى بنت مثلا ما تشخطش فيه وتزعق فيه لكن اسمع ليه بتفكر كده ليه ايه السبب وناقشه and if during this discussion uh, he uncovered you issues that you don't know how to handle it go and seek guidance maybe from a professional Christian counselor and try to understand how to respond to your son or your daughter and the same for Sunday school uh, servants and you need to consider these possibilities our possibility may be there is a breakdown in a child's family يعني لو انت النهارده كخادم وجالك واحد بيقول لك يعني انا عايز ابقى بنت ولا انا حاسس ان انا بنت او بنت قالت لك حاسس ان انا روح ولد في جسم بنت كلام اللي هم بيقولوه ده maybe in the family there is abandonment maybe the one of the father one of the parent father or mother they are socially and emotionally disconnected from their children maybe there is in the family separation or divorce كل الحاجات دي كان بتاثر في اولادنا also maybe uh, يعني the child perceived rejection or has been abused or abandoned or they make fun of his gender or they discriminate against the gender يعني مثلا في البيوت اللي هم زي discriminate against girls or favor boys more than girls ممكن الجيرل هنا تحس انها نفسها تبقى بوي عشان تاخد كل الاتنشن اللي اخوها واخده كل الحاجات دي يعني تو اف ذي ار ريجكتد اور ابيوزد اور ديسكريمينيتد اجينست ذيم ذيس كان بي اولسو ا كوز اولسو مي بي يعني يور تشايلد از سفرنج فروم ديبريشن اور اذر مينتال اور بيرسوناليتي ديس اوردر Again, you need to check whether the LGBT community influence your child in a way or another. The social media, the cartoon they watch, the friends in school, uh, they are exposed to all these things. And you need to be alert to all these things around them. برضو check whether friends or family members exposed your child to pornography from a young age or maybe the child is a victim of sexual abuse برضو حاجة تانية احنا بنعملها غلط في تربية ولادنا ان احنا we focus on the moral behavior not on their relationship with God ربنا قال he who loves me keep my commandment so what is the starting point in احنا to love God and when we love God the fruit of this we will keep his commandment it's not the opposite it's not when you keep the commandment you will end up by loving God. So in raising your children, if you are moralistic, صح وغلط, صح وغلط, زي بتعمل ده, لا, ده غلط ده ما يصحش, maybe the, the child will develop a feeling of guilt and shame. لكن لو انت علمته زي يحب ربنا, and how to enjoy his relationship with God, The fruit of this relationship with God in how he will be uh, spiritually and morally correct. This 
will be the fruit of his relationship with God. And his relationship with God, this will be motive for him in the uh, to not to appoint God and to live according to the biblical um, commandment. And when you teach him about the, the relationship with God, also you need to teach him how to honor God more than pleasing the people. Honoring God because we love him. So, and as St. Peter said, we ought to obey God more than men. Uh, many people, they become homosexual or transgender because based on يعني, the influence of the friends, influence of the society, just based on people's feeling and experiences. But a, a true Christian should not fall into this trap. Anna, I will honor God even if the, I am the only person honoring God in this world. Like St. Athanasius, when they told him, the whole world is against you, he said, I am against the world. And actually, if there is a separation between me and God, definitely there will be separation between me and others. But if I love God, then I will love others, including even my enemies. So, in practicality, you cannot please people without pleasing God. Maybe for a short time. But if there is enmity between me and God, this will reflect on my relationship with others. Another point you need to teach your children how to take the gender rules from the scripture, not from the culture, not from man-made tradition, we need actually to study what the scripture said about the genders. What is the role of man and what is the role of a female? Unfortunately, the culture today try to teach roles of the two genders against the teaching of the scripture. Uh, from the scripture we know that male and female both of them are equally valuable before God but they complement one another the fact that God created male and female means the world need both gender doesn't need one gender and their roles complement one another but when today we eliminate any difference in roles between male and female, then how the society will be functional? Uh, so in, in our homes, in our houses, I think these two roles, the role of a male and role female, should be well defined according to the word of God. Uh, uh, if a child is growing in dysfunctional family, in which the mother is very controlling and domineering. And the father is very anxious and passive. The boys in this family will not be, dis will not be satisfied with their gender. So, uh, 
we need actually to have healthy functional families if we want to protect our children from all this negative influence of the society. Uh, we need also to teach our children how to deal with the other gender with respect and with love and with honor. Differentiate between the roles of the two genders without putting one gender above the other or favor one gender above the other. How we deal if my son or my daughter or my student in Sunday school came and told me that يعني, uh, I want to change my gender to a girl or to a boy. How can we deal with this? Um, of course, I'm assuming that your, your son or daughter who are يعني, attacking with these thoughts they believe in God and they believe in the authority of the scripture. So, number one, encourage them to lean into the faith and simply keep talking uh, with them about how this is an attack from Satan and he should actually cling to God in his relationship with God and he can overcome this warfare. Uh, and remind them that the most aspect of humans is not their gender orientation, but is their, what is the most important is their identity in Christ. And let them put this struggle in their prayers before God. And they should read the scripture to find the truth in the scripture. What the scripture says about creation and how God created male and female. And encourage them to enter into a genuine, sincere relationship with God. And to maintain eternal mindset. What do I mean by eternal mindset? When we understand sexuality as God intended to be, this is actually God-designed picture of seeing and understanding more about God himself. So, if I understand my role as a male or as a female, this will lead me to understand about God. Because sexual morality is not the goal, but sexual morality is a mean to understand God. So the more I respect my gender and I respect God's plan for me, the more I will be connected with God and the more I will understand his economy. What if my son or my daughter, they don't... Uh, they say, I don't believe the scripture. Scripture is written uh, in a time that fits the culture. Uh, it's not the word of God. Or they claim to be atheist. 
etc. يعني. طبعا دي هتبقى يعني مور ديفيكولت بان without the grace of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit how you can ask somebody to obey God or to have a relationship with God uh, علشان كده if you try to force them to follow what's right this actually may break the relationship between you and your children and maybe they start to think to move out or to live on their own etc لكن الولاد دولت most probably يعني they suffer from depression they suffer from self cutting Uh, injuring themselves, uh, panic attacks, and anxiety, etc. So you can actually present God to them from your experience and from the experience of godly people. That is the solution. And في فرق إنك تقول له ما هو كل ده بيحصل لك عشان تبعد عن ربنا وعشان تأنكر وجود ربنا. فرق انك تقول له in my experience and the experience of my godly friends people who live with God actually they as God promised us he will give us his peace my peace I give to you my peace I live with you not as the world gives so I give you so in this relationship with God We will have joy, we will have peace. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And then you can invite him. You may try to, to, I'm inviting you or I'm challenging you to try this. You tried several things and you are not satisfied. Come and see. Come and hear the Lord. Maybe the solution, the satisfaction What you are looking for, you will find it in your relationship with God. So here actually, what you are trying to focus on, not his behavior, but his relationship with God. That is the starting point. Like if you start, no, مش هتعمل كده وده مش مقبول وده غلط وده احنا متعودناش على كده. He will not listen to you, most probably. لكن When you invite him to start a, a true relationship with God and to trust God with his life, then this can be the starting point in يعني, his transformation. Uh, but what if And then I am a youth and I know it is wrong but I am attacked with these thoughts. I am not satisfied with my gender. I, I want to change my gender. But I know it's wrong. But I cannot stop the warfare. Uh, some helpful point uh, to remember that our body is created with a purpose. Our body is created with a divine purpose. As we read in Genesis chapter 1, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And he created them to actually participate in procreation with God. Uh, and we, we should also The person should know that our bodies are not our own. As St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 16. So, if my body is not my own, I should not actually change my body. 
تخيل كده لو في واحد يعني رسام مشهور جدا 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 and he painted a very very beautiful picture هل انت تروح بعد ما تشتري البيكتشر دي اللي انت دفعت فيها thousands of dollars تروح تحط فيها يعني your pains and to change it and try to يعني change this picture definitely this is not smart at all in the same way God created us in a very very amazing way أنا فاكر لما كنت في الكلية كان بيدرسنا فيسيولوجي دكتور غير مسيح اسمه كان الدكتور عمر زكي أنا فاكر لما كان يقعد يشرح كده يقف كده أن هي بوز أن سي شوفوا عظمة ربنا شوفوا عظمة الخالق يعني جسم الإنسان والفيسيولوجي اللي موجود فيه والأناتوم اللي موجود فيه معجزة ما فيش أي حد كان ديزاين something like this وكل اختراع في الدنيا كل اختراع متاخد from the creation ما فيش اختراع في الدنيا بره creation أي مثلا تليفون أو ديفايس يقول لك فيرجن 1 2 مش عارف ايفون 13 ايفون 14 اتسترا بيحسنوا منه لكن ربنا من ساعه ما خلق الانسان ما حبش يعمل يعني فيرجن تانية احسن من الكريشن الاولاني فان كان في اي صوره بتترسم بواحد فنان فنان عالمي الواحد ما يقربش منها ما يحطش فيها خط كده ازاي الواحد يلخبط في جسمه ازاي الواحد ياخد هرمونات ان تو التر healthy sexual organs how we do this and God did not create us only but he purchased us with his own blood he redeemed us by dying on the cross so to alter you know our body or the healthy sexual organ this denies that I am the masterpiece of God And I am uh, embracing corrupt value from the society in which we are living. Another point we should know, and if I'm struggling with transgenderism, in the sexual sin is spiritually devastating. Changing appearance or genitalia or hormones does not actually change the person's sex. You will continue to be male or female regardless what you are going to do. And if you take hormones, if you do some surgeries, you are male or you are a female. And because it is printed in your DNA, You cannot change your DNA. And also, it will not change God's standard of His original design of your life. God will hold you accountable as a male or as a female. Regardless, if I told you I'm a female, I'll tell you that you're a male. Because our biological sex, God coded it into our DNA. That's why it is a denial of God if a person wants to change his gender. Your body is created as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And مثلا when you read in the Old Testament how God gave Solomon a specific instruction how to take care of the temple Solomon temple 
God also designed every single detail in our body with divine purpose. Maybe you don't understand the divine purpose of every single detail in our body. But we should not actually be our own gods and alter the hormones and the body and the structure that God created us with. Another point, uh, the person should saturate his mind with the truth. Unfortunately, you are saturated with what the society pours in our mind. We are saturated with all these corrupt values of the society. يعني ناس تقعد تقرا في الاثيزم قبل ما يقروا في السكريبشر يقروا على الترانسجندرزم قبل ما يقروا في السكريبشر try actually to saturate your mind and your heart with the word of God as St. Paul said be transformed by the renewal of your mind Also, Satan now is casting doubt on the scripture. And unfortunately, people from within the church start to cast doubt on the scripture. فلما الشيطان ده بيشتغل يعني خطه محكمه بس طبعا he cannot stand before the wisdom of God. فلما ناس من الكنيسة تشككني في الاسكريبشر في الاثورتي بتاعت الاسكريبشر هيجي أي واحد ايزي يقول لك ما هو الاسكريبشر ممكن تكون مكتوبة كده عشان الكالتشر ويديناي وي حكاية ان ربنا خلقهم ميل ان في ميل يقول لك ده يعني وزرتن in a certain way people were not advanced in science and medicine يعني they will find any excuses but If actually we esteem the scripture as the word of God, infallible and authoritative, then what's in the scripture will go, it has authority over me. But if I start attack the scripture as fallible, then it will have no authority over me. Also, we need to teach our children to have a high view of God's purpose in, in, in creation. God actually in creation separated many things. He separated darkness from light. He separated water above the firmament from waters below firmament. He separated the dry land from waters. He separated day from night. Also, he separated humankind into male and female. That is the design, that's the economy of God. We should also know that this design of two genders is sacred. And we should not play with it. It's a divine economy and divine plan. And we should not actually be gods. Let me come to the last point. How we deal with our colleagues, whether in school or in... Uh, in work who want us to address them with certain pronouns or with certain names. Uh, I will well put two principles before trying to answer this question because these questions are not easy to answer. But 
the first principle is your colleague is made in God's image and if he's transgender then he is uh, in need of God's grace to lead him or her to repentance because they are in violation with God's law. And this leads to the second principle. We need actually to offer continual prayer for them. And before asking how to deal with them, how to answer them, how to respond to them, the first principle in whom they are in need of God's grace to repent. And the second principle, they need a lot of prayer from you. And instead of thinking how to deal with them, actually in your prayer, even if they are not Christian, you need to keep them for pray in your prayers. As the Lord said, I did not come to call righteous, but sinners to repentance. The whole do not need physician but the sick they, they are in need of physician and the physician is our God so pray for them uh, regarding the names and the pronouns as Christian we will tell the truth and Using the wrong pronoun is not truth-telling. Uh, they may tell you that you don't respect me, you are antagonistic, you, you, you hate uh, the transgenderism, etc. But maybe one option is try to use the person name instead of the pronoun. But you need also to be ready and be prepared uh, if they trying to push you to use certain pronoun with them. So, يعني, one answer you need, مثلا, to tell them, are you demanding that billions of people of many cultures and religion abandon their own conviction uh, in order to follow your conviction? And you can tell them, we can live in peace with each other without forcing me to use a certain pronoun. Because actually, as I said a few minutes ago, his DNA or her DNA say they are males or females. So you can tell them, uh, I, am, I am calling you based on uh, your sex, not your gender, if, if they differentiate between the sex and gender. Yeah. Also, you need to defend your perspective. Don't be afraid. Uh, and you need to, to, to say it is not just biblical perspective, but even biology reveals that more than 99% are born with clear DNA, either they are males or female. Very, very, very few people they are born with XXY. That's very, very, very few people. Uh, and God promised us that during this time, don't be afraid because the Holy Spirit will teach you at this moment what you are going to say. So maybe you need to raise your heart in a short prayer to God before you answer. 
like Nehemiah when he was in front of the king. Like the king asked me, so I prayed and answered. So in a very short time, he maybe in a moment, he lifted his heart to God, prayed, and then he answered. Don't get emotional or angry or raise your voice in this conversation. Ask God to help you to use a calm and gentle tone. And ask God to give you the right words that he promised us. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will guide you in this moment what you should to say. Uh, and it's a time now to witness for our faith and to witness for the truth. Uh, don't be afraid to witness for the truth that God revealed to us in the scripture. We need to honor God in our life by witnessing for the truth, showing love for others who suffer from transgenderism or homosexuality or any this this sexual uh, immoral behavior. Keep them in your prayers that God may visit them with his salvation and heal them from all these illnesses. Uh, I, I tried as much as I can Nana, to cover the practical points, how to deal, how to prevent um, and to protect our children from going through this in parenting how to deal with your son or daughter or your student if they believe in God or if they don't believe in God, how to fight the good fight if I am myself suffer from this warfare and also how to deal with our colleagues in work or in school. I hope that the Holy Spirit may guide all of us to address these sensitive issues according to his will, while our goal is to gain everyone to the knowledge of God for their own salvation. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Yani, if you have any questions or comments, Tadal. Ki mikrofon tani? Dia wahda. Thank you, Sayyidina, for the lecture. I have a list of questions, actually. Fanny, I'll ask one or two, then, well, you know, if there is a chance, I'll ask the rest. So the first one is, at what age we should be teaching our children? Like, what is the line between something they say as a childish manner, like, and I think all the children say this at one point, like, you know, around four, five, six, or seven years old, and when do I have to stop him and they make a point I do not want to exaggerate with him, and like for every little thing he says, I make a, a big of a deal because that might come with the you know the opposite outcome, and at the same time, like what I let go and what I should stop at. That's number one. And the second part of this question is uh, the exposure. I know now the stuff is all over us, and uh, it might be very challenging to kind of stop everything around him, even if we do somehow things will just go in front of his eyes as the example uh, your grace gave us um, so should i actually kind of be a little relaxed not too much and but just try to talk to him and try to tell him what the scriptures say and you know show him this is what the world it is but also this is what the scripture says if i do this i'm just at risk that he's not convinced with what i tell him and because the way things are presented to him from the other side, it might be so, you know, attractive. In Israel, to the first point, we need actually to be proactive. I agree with you in the Mokin Kun, just he made a comment, just in a child's way, but 
I'm not gonna يعني, stop and make a point, but I will not let it go gently. I can say, مثلا, uh, I want to be a girl. Uh, I just I can make a, a comment كده, although you, you need to be proud that you are a boy and your sister proud that you are a girl because God, when he created you this way, created you for certain goal. No one can do it except you. Something very simple and very, very small. Abuna Loa Stefanos from New Jersey. He was a psychiatrist. Amal Kutayib is more purity. How to teach sexuality to your children according to the age. يعني even from two or three years old until they grow up. It's a very good book. يعني أنا encourage you then to give a كتاب ده to رو and to uh, teach your children again appropriate to, to, to their age. But according يعني the last part of your question if I say this like two different opinions, the scripture says this, but the world says that, I am actually making them like equal, two options, choose from them. But if I teach my children the authority of the scripture, the infallibility of the, trip, the scripture, the truth is in the scripture, anything against the scripture is falsehood. So I'm presenting the two opinion, but one is true, absolutely true, and the other is absolutely false. And then, if I follow what's absolutely true, I'll, I'll be blessed. Sometimes what's absolutely false can be attractive, and I can explain to them how the tree, the forbidden tree, was attractive to Adam and Eve but ended up with what? With death. So I should not actually follow what's attractive, but I should follow what's true. Shankeda, the authority of the scripture, the infallibility of the scripture, the inspiration, it's the word of God, it's not the word of men. The word of God is different than any other book, different than any other uh, yani, teaching or opinion, that is the word of God. Uh, we respect the opinion of the manufacturer in anything. يعني مثلا لو أنا شارع عربية ومكتوب كده في المانيول تعالى عربية don't do this warning, don't do I will respect it because they are the manufacturer. What about God? بس هي problem بقى هير إن لو أنا بقى I adopted the evolution not the creation ما هي أصلها الشيطان هي خطة واحدة لما يجي يقولك there is no creation it's evolution يبقى خلاص يبقى God is not the manufacturer why should I respect his opinion about gender فهو الشيطان بيخبط في كل حتة but when I have the 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 whole truth from the scripture, the truth that actually the, the whole world held for 2,000 years, then I will protect my children from being influenced by the attractive views of the world. Because one of the titles of Satan is a deceiver. Deceiver means he will make you believe a lie. And he, he, he is also... Uh, Three titles for Shaitan Tempter, Deceiver, and Accuser. So, after make you believe a lie, he will tempt me. Tempt me means what? He will make it attractive, pleasurable. Then he will stand and accuse me before God. These three titles are very important. He is a deceiver, he is a tempter, and he is the accuser. That's what Satan actually does with us all the time. Yes. Hold the microphone, Mike. Sayyidna, your grace spoke about using pronouns when we're requested to use pronouns. Frequently with my patients, 
they ask me to use different pronouns for, for them. Often what I'll try to do is say you and not use any pronouns at all. But then there's another issue that Your Grace had mentioned but didn't really address when they ask you to call them by a different name. So if their name is John, they want you to call them Sky or something that's yeah, any very yeah, any gender neutral. Should we call them by that name? And if they ask, their chart even now says preferred name Keza. Like, do we, do we use that in our documentation as well? If you document with you know, their given name or with their given pronouns, sometimes that can be a, an issue. And many names actually can be used for both genders. A name is just a given name. Uh, you know, in Arabic and English, there are many names uh, you know, can be used for boys and girls. So, يعني أنا بالنسبة لي to use a name is much يعني is more acceptable than to use a gender that's not true because to, to refer to a boy she this is a lie but مثلا if you want to, يعني to name himself or herself another name and, and many names actually can be applied to both genders so name is something given. If, uh, يعني, it's more acceptable to use a name than to use a pronoun. Now, more often they won't ask for he or she, it's they. They want they or they or one of the other يعني, strange pronouns. Bardu, no. I, I will not Bardu. say يعني, I will use it or I don't use it, but when I refer to them, I refer as by, by the name most of the time. And, and he, if he pressured me why you are not using uh, she or, or he, I will tell them I'm not comfortable. And you need to respect my conviction, but I'm using your name. Yani, we have to be strong in defending our conviction and our truth. They should not impose on us what we are not comfortable with. But out of respect, I'm using the name that he is choosing. But he cannot force me to use a pronoun I'm not comfortable to use. That is, as he want to be respected, I want also to be respected. It shouldn't go only one way. Yes. I'll the microphone, my father. Updated their HR policies. Uh, to reflect that, so we were made to take training to for restrooms, for example, if a female wants to use a male wants to use female bathrooms, or somebody had a sex change. <laughs> like we were made to take training, HR training at work, and a lot of those HR trainings to to um, that you sign off on is just to. If you, you know, if you break the rules, they have grounds based upon they can fire you or they can reprimand you. So a lot of it was uh, if somebody, if a, if a man had a sex change or decided to use a female's restroom or a man had an operation and he would rather to be referred to in a certain way for a pride month. So it is... What I'm trying to say is not as simple as it's my right anymore. It could be grounds for you losing your job. Actually, if they fart somebody because he is forced to use a certain pronoun, it can be a case for, of discrimination. Because you are discriminated against me, they want to force me to say something I'm not comfortable with. And... Uh, we need to speak out our conviction. We should not be afraid. And I think the problem in Ahna, we are willing to yield and to compromise our faith and our conviction easily because we are afraid. But I am sure if a person is fired just because he is uh, forced to do something against his own uh, conviction this is a case of discrimination and uh, in a country it's a 
pluralistic country uh, try to accept every minority, then actually I have to be accepted in this culture and they need to respect my conviction as they demand me to respect the conviction of others. We need to be strong, we should not be afraid and, and, and yield easily to the pressure from a moral society. Yes. So, so you know, a, a lot of the the current situation that we're in, especially the youth, comes about because of an internal uh, ambivalence within oneself that leads itself to almost like a hatred or a despisal of oneself. And when we look at the world in which the youth live in, which is very different than the world we live in, because they're plugged in 24-7, they're exposed to things in mainstream that most of us don't even know about. Everything is designed to make them hate themselves, to question themselves. And in many ways, this removes them from the love of God. And that's when all of these ideas start becoming real to them instead of just fiction. So the question that, that I would love, that, that I struggle with on a regular basis, is how do we as servants help these children feel the love of God? Because if they were to feel the love of God, if they were to understand their true worth, I don't think we would be having as, as much problem as we're having today. Actually, you answered the question. And everything is designed around them in order to hate themselves. But, and I want, I want to ask them, هل هما after they start to practice homosexuality or uh, to change their gender, etc., etc., هل دلوقتي they, they become happy? No, they don't. Actually, statistics says the number, يعني, the percentage of suicide is very high among the transgender and the, the homosexuals, etc. فزي ما أنت قلت the beginning ودلنا أنا برضو قلت في lecture. The beginning is not to ask them to change their behavior, but the beginning is to have a genuine relationship with God. How I think there are two main elements here. The first element is to start to communicate with God, to ask them to, to speak with God as a son is speaking with his father. To open his heart and speak to God. Very, very important. How to teach them to be open for God. Their struggles, their fears, their worries, they actually have to admit it to the Lord. And the second point in Homa, they need to love the scripture and read the scripture. Read the scripture with the mind that the scripture is the word of God has authority over me. If they start by these two things, reading the scripture, and talking with God. Eventually, this will lead to other things. Noah, he will feel that he wants to repent and confess his sins. Uh, communion will come بعد كده. يعني, like in the starting point, to connect with God. And to connect is to talk with him and to listen to him. Once they connect with God, they feel the love of God. How can I feel the love of a person? I have no communication with him. So the challenge here is how to make them communicate with God. احنا احيانا برضه من الاخطاء كثيره بنعملها at Sunday school servants تروح تزور واحد وكده تقول له يلا بقى يا حبيبي تعالى لحد جاي يتناول في الكنيسه. واخد بالك؟ وتجيبه يتناول وهو ما فيش اي تغيير في حياته. ده ده مش حل المشكله التناول ده مش سحر لكن ذا ستارتنج بوينت ان تخليه يعمل ريليشن شيب مع ربنا بالعكس ده هو لو اتناول هو مش تايب ده ممكن يبقى لايبيلتي عليه لكن الستارتنج بوينت وين اي اي ادريس وان اوف ذيس يوث هاو تو ديفلوب ا ريليشن شيب هاو تو كوميونيكيت ويز جاد فالاول علمه انه يكلم ربنا بعد كده هتيجي الاجبيه بس الاول هو يكلم ربنا لازم يعرف ازاي يقف صد ربنا ويفتح قلبه ويكلم ربنا
بعد كده بقيه الحاجات بقى تانية الصوم والاجبيه والاعتراف والتناول هيجي لكن ذا ستارتنج بوينت الكلام وكلمه ربنا تو توك تو جاد اند تو ليسن ويز هيم اغلبنا لما بفتقد واحد اقول خلاص بقى انا عايزك تيجي مع حد الكنيسه وتتناول خلاص حبيبي هتتناول تروح تقعد مع ابونا وتعترف ممكن يقعد يقول كلمتين مع ابونا ويجي ويتناول بس هو ما اتغيرش لانه ما داش حلاوه ربنا لازم في الاول تو كونكت وذ ذا لورد ذات از ذا ستارتنج بوينت فيليب عامل ايه معنا ثانية قال له كام سي تعالى وقابل المسيح كام سي وده اللي داوود قاله ذوق وانظروا ما اطيب الرب تيست هاو ذا لورد از ويت So one of one of our daughters, um, when she was entering, she was five years old. She's entering kindergarten. Uh, she came home and told me that the boy sitting next to her had two dads. So I listened and I asked her, "Yanni, what did you say?" And she said, um, "She said I told him that's not possible and you can't and you have to have a mom." So it was. Um, so I validated her answer and I said that's correct, but. I think also it was in the back of my mind that I wanted to say, but I didn't say, is Like, I feel like when we were younger, it was easier. Like, it was very rare that we encountered these situations. But I feel like now, as adults, we're struggling to be vocal about the right way. Like it's even in our colleagues at work or people on the street, it's hard to, or I find it hard to say, no, I don't believe what you're doing is right. Okay. So I feel like we need to start this when our kids are younger, but how do we teach them to stand up for it without getting them in trouble in these situations? I think standing up when we, I think stand for our opinion, not just to volunteer our opinion. And St. Paul made it very clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, and he differentiated between the believers and the non-believers. And he said, in verse 9, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the, the covetous or extortioner, extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother a brother means a believer uh, verse 12 uh, for what have I to do with judging those who those also who are outside do you not judge those who are inside but those who are outside God judge them therefore put away from yourself the evil person St. Paul said يعني, outside I'm not going to go and say you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong you're wrong لكن, if I am asked for my opinion yes I need to be vocal and I need to speak about you know, what I believe in and that is the truth and if I'm pressured to Uh, use something against my conviction again I need to be strong and to say no I, I'm not gonna that's my right Nana, to speak my conviction and you need to respect my right as you demand also to respect your rights like in a very difficult time in a very difficult time like uh, uh, we, it, it gonna be uh, أنا مش متشائم باي ذا واي بس جونا بي ورس ذان ذيس يعني لأن يعني مثلا في آخر آخر خمس ست سنين ذا وورلد أكشلي إز جوز يعني إيفري داي بنلاقي حاجة ورس ذان بيفور فا وي نيد تو بي ريدي وي نيد تو بي ريدي وي نيد تو بي بريبيرد وي نيد تو بي سترونج وي نيد تو بي إيبل تو ديفند أور كونفيكشن أند أور فيث أند ذا تروث ويز ويز كوريج نوت ويز فير إن ابني من 22 سنة فات راح كندر جاردن 
و هي كام باك فروم سكول الكلام ده 22 ييرز اجو احنا بنسمعه دلوقتي بنتكلم عليه المدر... المدرسه نفسها ذا تيتشر تاد ديم ات ذات داي ان ذا فاميلي ات كان بي فايف ديفرنت كايندز اوف فاميلي مام اند داد مام اند مام باب اند باب مش فاكره الباقيين ايه طب انتوا عارفين هم عارفين بس عايزه اقول ان الحكايه باديه من ريلي ريلي ابتدت من زمان بس از جيتنج وورس ماري Um, Yeftak, you, you talked about how to address these you know, transgenders at work and in the workplace at school. But how about, Tiani, our kids are very young, Lisa, maybe they are this happens. But we go to a restaurant, will waiter, will waitress, transgender, or maybe the kids مش مش فاهمين او يعني يعني في مره هم ما كانش على بالهم فطنشنا الموضوع. But how do you handle it لما هم يسالوا او هم confused. And as I said we need to be proactive. يعني وانا بشرح لهم في سفر التكوين هشرح ان ربنا بخلقنا ولد وبنت ميل اند فيميل. And Every gender should respect and love and, and be proud of his gender. Maybe if they are, for six or seven years old, يعني exposed to حاجات زي كده ممكن أزود بقى على الحتة دي إن unfortunately Satan play with the mind of some people not to like their gender and to change the gender. Or I can use, for instance, the metaphor of if there is a beautiful picture painted by. Uh, one of the very, very famous uh, painters should, or artists. Should we, we change this? God designed us this way. When we restaurant and see something like what is this? And we think that So we need to pray for this person and Rabbina to restore him to the right uh, mind. But we need, again, we need to be proactive. We need to be proactive. Okay. Yani, if they say this at school, they will be expelled from school, for sure. Yani, if they say this to, to the other kids in a kindergarten or uh, in elementary school or whatever, if they speak their heart or if they speak the truth, no, this is wrong. We were taught that the family is so and so, and God said so and so. They will be expelled, and they will uh, even um, say about the parents that they are homophobic or. or Actually, whatever. I know we let Kalimu, we know because we are in a country, Mafrut encourage freedom, and freedom of speech, freedom of belief. Even لو لو المدرس or the principal try to expel them, actually it, it's a case of discrimination, because they are forcing their beliefs. on my son or my daughter. ف... No, it will not happen. إحنا اللي خايفين. إحنا بنخاف لنتكلم our opinion. لكن we need actually to be strong and, and to, to speak the truth is. بس زي ما قلت من شوية إن أنا مش, مش, مش هروح المدرسة وأقول ده غلط وده صح وده غلط وده صح لأن زي ما, ما قال لنا بولس الرسول ماذا لي ان ادين الذين هم من خارج؟ الله يدينهم، لكن احنا لينا ريسبونسبيلتي اباوت ذا بريفر، ا بيرسون هو از نيمت ا براذر. لكن اف اي ام اسكت اباوت ماي اوبينيون، ذن اي سبيك، ولو بعد ما انا اي سبيك ماي اوبينيون، جه قالوا لي اللي انت غلطان وهنطردك من المدرسه، طب ما انت اسك اباوت ماي اوبينيون، واي اسك ماي اوبينيون وانت ار نوت ويلينج تو ليسن تو ماي اوبينيون. لو الـ لو الـ انا اي ثينك المشكله لو ابتدوا مثلا تو اتاك ذيم اور تو ديسكريمينيت اجينست ذيم اور تو تريت ذيم بادلي اور تو جانج اجينست ذيم بس ولادنا ما بيعملوش كده ولادنا اطيب من ان هم يعملوا كده لكن تو سبيك يور اوبينيون نو اي دونت ثينك ان في حد يطرد ولد من المدرسه عشان كده ولو ده حصل زي ما بقول لك اتس اتس ا كيس اوف ديسكريمينيشن Because 
they should respect our opinion and, and our belief. They may be respect, be respect the Muslim, the Mormon, the Jehovah Witness, the Buddhist. They have to respect the Christian. Man, a Christian woman, we cannot speak their own opinion. Ida? طبعا بنشجع الهوم سكولينج والكوبتيك سكولز يعني نشكر ربنا ان حاليا كنيسه ماريولو بتعمل مدرسه برضو كل ما يبقى في كوبتيك سكولز بتبقى حمايه لينا ولاولادنا يعني طيب اكتفي بكده اتفضل نصلي